Tourism has fast become an important livelihood around the world. Here in Lapland and Rovaniemi, my current hometown, the increase of international visitors has been very visible. There's a growing amount of foreign tourists traveling to Lapland to experience the Arctic. A question that arises is why people travel to the north and why do people travel in general? What are their motivation? A common answer is that I want to see and experience new places to learn new things. As a science communicator in Arcticum Science Center, working with popularizing Arctic science to the general public, I see the increase in visitors to our exhibition and I know the scientific content that we communicate. The question is, what do these travelers learn during their trip? What kind of information and science is there to be combined with traveling to beautiful destinations and participating in unique tourism adventures? To deliberate around this issue, I will embark on a road trip heading towards my home mountains and tundra in the northern parts of Finnish Lapland. My first stop is at Samaltunturi. It is a beautiful mountain that is part of the Ullaspallas National Park. One special feature with this place is that this is where there has been measured the cleanest air in the world. Just imagine, nowhere in the world is there any cleaner air than here. Clean air can be observed with your own eyes if you know what to look for. An indicator of clean air is the abundance of arboreal lichens in the forest. Lichens are indicators of a wide variety of environmental stressors such as air quality. My road trip takes me to Kilpisjärvi and the Käsivarsi wilderness area. These are my home mountains and part of the Scandinavian mountain range that runs throughout the whole of Scandinavia. It is a bare and harsh area with a long winter season and constantly and rapidly changing weather. A question to answer is what different kind of knowledge, scientific knowledge, do we find in this white and bare environment that has an added value for the travelers? The understanding of weather, climate, adaption of plants and animals are all topics that are present in this landscape, as well as the culture of the people using these areas. The landscape is also interwoven into earth sciences and in different spheres. In this white landscape, the cryosphere is prevailing. This is the earth sphere that contains water in solid form as snow, ice and permafrost. Part of this cryosphere is the ice on the lake from where I go fishing Arctic char. The lake ice forms the possibility for me to go ice fishing a bit like it does for the polar bears in the Arctic to be able to hunt for seals on the vast sea ice of the Arctic Ocean. Technology is also an important topic that is currently present everywhere. From means of travel like snowmobiles, airplanes and cars, to phone, cameras, GPSs, computers with all the different apps for various purposes. We are surrounded by technology even in this bare white mountain landscape. But traditional knowledge is something that is also important and that needs to be brought to the forefront. We are losing the traditional knowledge quickly in our current world. In the north, we all know that reindeer fur is the best insulation. Through science, we have been able to see that the hairs on the fur is hollow and traps air, and is therefore an excellent insulation towards cold temperatures.
some places contain more knowledge than others. An interesting place to visit is the Yerisyari Fish Library that is built in the middle of the forest. It is a small library that tries to combine the interest of fishing with scientific knowledge. It is the lifelong endeavor of one person, Mr. Ari Saviko, that has collected and rescued fish and fishing related literature and built a place for people to visit and to archive the collection. So knowledge is all around us and we learn new things every day without thinking that we are actually learning. We are all born with the willingness to understand and to explore the world. How can we use this realization to advance science communication and the understanding of the current situation of our planet? The tourists travel to remote destination in search for beautiful adventure, but often the information provided is scarce or even completely missing. After realizing this, the missing information and the potential of the travelers that are wanting to learn during their adventure, we started the Scientific Tourism Initiative. We applied for funding from the EU program, Northern Periphery and the Arctic program, and we also got funded. Our goal is to develop a new tourism and science communication concept that focuses on merging reliable content, both scientific and experience-based with tourism. This to the advantage of both the traveler, the tourism entrepreneur, as well as science communication in general. We wish all different actors in the science communication and the tourism feel more than welcome to join our scientific tourism initiative. Our initiative will be branded under the Wonder Seekers Expanding Minds brand. In addition, a membership network, digital infrastructure, guidelines and a marketing campaign is being created. Knowledge is everywhere.